Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, welcome to another episode of the Deen Show. Thank you for being with us today here. We are continuing talking about with our special guests. I said earlier, super special guests, because we get a lot of special guests. And this is my close friend, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, who is a former Christian preacher who accepted Islam while trying to convert a Muslim to Christianity. His father accepted Islam along with many. He runs many different programs, websites, trying to educate the non-Muslims on Islam. We're going to bring him out and we're going to continue talking about the first man, Adam. We're going to let you know a little bit about his life, what he was calling to, what he lived, and hopefully everybody can benefit from part two of Adam, the first man. The Prophet with Sheikh Yusuf Estes will be right back on the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi How are you? Alhamdulillah. Thank it's you. Nice to be back again. Thank you for being with us. That elevator ride coming all the way up here, I'd give you a nosebleed as high <laughs> up as this place is. It's really. I, I'm still, you know, remembering the old days when you started in that little small studio over on the other side of town. Uh, alhamdulillah. We said some Arabic words. Yeah. And I always take a minute because we have a lot of non-Muslims who are our brothers in humanity who are trying to get them to be our brothers in faith. Now, they heard Assalamu Alaikum. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Salam uh, is the exact same word as Shalom. Mm -hmm. Shalom from the Jewish. This is peace. Mm -hmm. The peace that uh, you, the tranquility, the the ease inside of your heart this is what it's talking about peace islam is so. islam is, is uh, yeah, peace. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be talking about islam muslims and usually before the uh, alarm goes off because if somebody says some arabic words you know we have this alarm going off because we don't want people to get confused so you think that maybe right now we should take a second and define some of the words that we're going to be using well certainly one of the mistakes that muslims have themselves is to give a wrong english definition to a word then later down the road it causes a problem when you're trying to understand something i take for instance the word islam the word islam comes from the same root as the word salam but they don't mean the same thing because you say salam alaikum peace be unto you this is mentioned in the Bible, in the New Testament, that Jesus went upon, uh, greeted his, his companions when he entered in upon them, and he said to them, Peace be unto you. He didn't say, Hey, what's up, guys? Probably not. <laughs> At least not in that dialogue. <laughs> not in that context. Yeah. So, we find that shalom or salam is a nice greeting to, to give people. But when you say Islam, you're talking about something much bigger, more profound, and complex because there's no word in English equal to it. There's no two words. There's not even a group of words because of the, it's a composite in English. There isn't anything like this. There are five words that if you take one of them out, it's not right anymore. Mm -hmm. It isn't the right thing. First, there's surrender. Then there is submission. Surrender is to give up, but submission is to agree to some terms. Third is obedience that you live up to what you said. Fourth is sincerity. Now, the sincerity of Islam proves that it cannot be forced on anyone because you can never force people to be sincere. Mm -hmm. You can force them to be a hypocrite. <laughs> That's easy. And some people don't even need to be forced yeah. to be a hypocrite. But sincerity is something that has to come from themselves. So that's a part of the word. The last and final of the composite word here is peace. Salam is in here. But this peace is a conditional peace because a person has to already have surrendered to God. They have to have already submitted to his terms, obeyed his commandments, done so with full and complete um, dedication to it. Their intention is solely for him, a purity, as it were, of this surrender and giving over to the Lord. Then, finally, to be at peace with the result. If you said, God, I want whatever you want for me, that's what I want today. So it rains. And you say, well, that isn't what I wanted, so now I'm not happy. No, no, you said you'd be at peace with it. Yeah. So if you said, well, uh, God, I'll take whatever you give me, and I need a new car. Well, you wind up getting an old van, and you said, well, I want a hot-looking car. Well, no, you, this is what you said. I want in my life the best for me according to you, God. But then you don't get the 
the wife or the husband that you thought you were going to get and it's a hard life and maybe there's abuse in your family and you hate that but and we should hate abuse obviously but that's not the point what i'm saying is god gives you something and you are at peace with what he gave you it doesn't mean you have to accept what other people are doing to you but you accept that whatever god gives you especially in health issues and wealth issues things like that that it's beyond your control someone gets cancer someone has a liver disease someone has a brain tumor any of these things and if they got mad and started get cursing god for that or saying there is no god or otherwise that, that wouldn't have happened no then they've missed the whole point the, a lot of people become atheists when they begin to think that if there was a god then these things these bad things wouldn't happen well that's not true these people are not accepting that there's a God and using that as an excuse, but in reality, there still is God and he's the one who caused things to happen, but it's a test for you because this is not the ultimate life for you. Yeah. The so, ultimate life, paradise, is the ultimate life. Uh -huh. And you get there by his mercy, his grace that he bestows on people, and you don't get that if you're out here cursing him. <laughs> so surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, all in peace, and this is summed up with one word, Islam. Yeah, you see why people don't try to translate it. Wow, this is deep. Muslim, how does that fit in the equation? Okay, well, as you know, Muslim is coming from the word Islam itself. Mm -hmm. In Arabic, you don't use an E-R suffix mm -hmm. at the end of the word like er, like walk er, and talker, thinker, stinker. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that. You use a prefix of mu. The adhan, the call of the prayer, adhan. If somebody's doing that, he's a muadhan. And if somebody's traveling, which is suffer, yes. he's a musafir. If somebody's praying, which is sali, he's a musali. Mm -hmm. So you put mu in front of Islam and you say mu Islam. However, because that's not the verb, it's Muslim because it comes from aslama. So you say Muslim. Wow, that is just very deep. It's simple. And this is something now we're getting to our topic, the first man. We were talking in part one about Adam. Mm -hmm. Did he do surrender, submission, sincerity, all these things, which if, is Islam? If he didn't, then, he, then uh, he would not have fulfilled his purpose. Mm -hmm. And for sure, the first man has to fulfill the purpose. Yeah. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't work in the plan of Almighty God if the very first thing he made was a bummer. <laughs> it has to be right. Yes. So we look to Adam as being the first and absolute. He was perfection. Because otherwise it also wouldn't fit the verse, la khalakhalakno insana fi asani taqwim, which we mentioned in the last program. For those of you who weren't with us then, shame on you for not being with us. But, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> this means more or less that Allah said, I, I have verily created my best of all creation, which is now a human being. So by saying that, Allah has said that, that means Adam has to be the best of the best of the best, at least in the beginning, because uh, he is the first one. Yeah. And he had done a mistake, which was he ate the fruit mm -hmm. and that he was commanded not to eat. He and his wife, his wife, as we know, was cre created from his own rib bone. And the two of them together were in paradise. They could have anything they wanted. But they were ordered, don't eat from this one tree. It was a test only, yes. nothing else. And this was the only sin mentioned about Adam and Eve. They did not obey. They ate the fruit that they were told not to eat. The devil, on the other hand, who existed before them, was not a human, nor was he an angel. He was from the jinn. The jinn were the first ones to have free will or free choice. Yes. And they existed before Adam. Now, this one particular jinn had been raised up to this very high level to pray along with the angels. But when the command came to bow down because of the creation of Adam, the angels bowed down. But he didn't. Mm -hmm. Now, the way this is mentioned in the Quran, the very first uh, time talking about this, you'll find it if you'd like to look it up in the Quran. In chapter 2, you can look at verse, uh, I think it's 31, right in that area. Because Allah orders the, the prostration here of everybody bow down because of the creation of Adam. And it says that they all bow down. It says all the angels bowed down except Iblis. Mm -hmm. That's his name. Yes. 
yes. the, uh, the devil's name, and not Lucifer, it's Iblis. The way that a lot of people try to understand the English translation is to say, well, he must be an angel. Mm -hmm. Same mistake that people have made for centuries. Yeah. To say he's an angel because of the, the wording of the verse here. But if you know Arabic, that's not what it says. Because it would have said in Arabic that they all bowed down, Illa Iblisu. Okay? Yeah. But it doesn't say that. It says Illa Iblisa. The U at the end of it means that he's from that group. The A means he's from something else. Yes. So it would be like saying, Every, you know, all of the mechanics on the job quit except uh, Fred. Yeah. Okay, except Fred. So you would think, okay, then he must have been one of the mechanics. But in Arabic, when you say it, it would be like all of the mechanics quit, walked off the job, you know, except for this guy, Fred, who was not really one of the mechanics anyway. Uh-huh. But just the difference of U and A gives that clue in the Arabic language. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about how Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, He put them in the garden, said stay away from the tree. The devil came, tempted them, and they fell for his trick. So yeah, and again, we're, we should always mention this, that Islam is not blaming the woman mm -hmm. for what the man did. Yeah. Adam ate the fruit, he sinned. Eve ate the fruit, she sinned. Both of them had sinned. The devil had refused to obey God by not bow, bowing down. He was ordered to do something, didn't do it. They were ordered, don't do something. They did do it. So we learn from this that there are commands that tell you do something and commands that say, don't do something. Mm -hmm. Honor your mother and your father, a commandment in the Bible and in the Quran. This is something to do. Don't eat pork. This is something clearly don't do. So if you eat the pork, this would be a sin. And if you didn't honor the mother and the father, this would be a sin. So they did it. They committed sin, both of them, all of them. And all repented except for Iblis. The devil still has to this day not repented. Now, there's a great lesson that can be learned from this, can't there? What did he say to our great, great father to have him slip up? What was he promising him? Did he make this him some kind of... Well, the Bible has a story, and then there are some other traditions that mention that he was promised that he would have eternal life, mm. which I don't know if that's exactly all he was promised or if it was more than that, but that's why it's often referred to as the tree of life, and it said that whoever ate from it would live forever. But this obviously didn't work because Adam died anyway. Yeah. And obviously the devil's a liar. Whatever he promised him, it wasn't true. But he magnified that sin. Because it's not the sin that is the big problem. Yeah. Because humans sin. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't matter if you said, let's take alcohol as an example, or drugs. Mm -hmm. In yours, in my estimation, the drugs would be worse because we know they do such permanent damage. But the alcohol might be worse because you kill more people with a car than you do when you're sitting there doing whatever drug addicts do. Yeah. And I guess they just sit around and go stupid. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't want to know. Uh -huh. But at the same time, the problem isn't whether or not somebody killed a person, which is horrible. It's like you killed the whole world. Or if they just refuse to bow down. Mm -hmm. The problem comes in when they won't repent. Mm -hmm. Because if they know there's God and they refuse to repent to Him, this is the thing which will ultimately make it so they will never enter the paradise. So the thing is that acknowledging that you have a Lord like Adam did and repenting if you do fall into error like he did. And let's jump to another prophet. If you don't mind, I kind of go backward and forward. Okay. Another prophet is the prophet Jonah. Yes. Now he has his own book in the Old Testament. And the Quran, he also has his own book or chapter or surah called Yunus. Chapter 10 of the Quran, if you'd like to read it, it's very interesting. But you're going to find a lot more details there mm -hmm. than you're going to find in the Bible, yes. and depending on which version of the Bible you have. But there's only one version of the Quran, mm -hmm. and it's very clear that, that he was sent as a prophet. Yes. Now, we talked about what a prophet is. Mm -hmm. A prophet is someone who is special. Now, if he comes with scripture, then he becomes super special. 
Yeah. Okay. And by the way, I'm not special, and I'm not super special. <laughs> okay. I'm just a person. I don't mind you saying these things when you introduce, but but in reality, it's it's not a good thing to try to make some person be better than somebody else because mm -hmm. they're really not. Yeah. But Jonah, or Eunice, is there is called in the Arabic language. Was sent by Allah, meaning that he was from those people, but he was inspired by Allah. This is what we meant by sent. We don't mean that he was mailed to him in a letter or something like that. Yeah. But he was from them. But his message to them was to worship God alone without any partners. This is the message that came with all the prophets. Now, these people of Nineveh, which is, by the way, in Iraq, yeah. they did not listen. They refused. Nobody accepted his message. Yeah. So he left. Mm -hmm. Now, when he's out in the water, he went out in the sea. The mm -hmm. storm came up. And as a result, the people on the ship uh, tried to figure out what was the bad luck that was happening to him. Mm -hmm. They determined that it was him. They mm -hmm. threw him overboard. And he told them to throw him over anyway. Mm -hmm. They threw him overboard. And when he uh, hit the water, this, the, this whale swallowed him. Mm -hmm and took him down. Now, this, everybody knows the story of Jonah and the whale. But what we find is that he would have been there until the day of judgment had he not said this phrase. And this is gone from the Bible. The phrase is, La ilaha illa ante subhanaka ini kuntumine dolamin. Usually translated to English as, The praise is to you, Allah and the glory, and the majesty. And verily, the wrongdoing here, it is me who has done it to myself. Any mean. Verily, I'm from the wrongdoers. In other words, he didn't blame God because he's in the whale. Mm -hmm. Anybody could have done that. Anybody could say, what am I doing in here? What did I do to deserve this? We always find ourselves saying that every day about this or that. What did I do to deserve this? We find human beings are saying that. But in this case, he didn't say that. He said, the praise is to you, God. Glory and majesty to you. This wrongdoing, the, the reason that I'm here is a result of my own wrong thinking and my own wrong actions. And by saying that, immediately Allah caused the whale to take him and spit him back. And he went back to his people. And he was amazed to find that all of them, in his absence, had embraced his belief of only one God. And for that reason, Allah preserved that city until just our decade. All these centuries upon centuries, millennium after millennium, that place has been saved there in Iraq. And only now since Mr. Bush went over there, he went during his administration, uh, has we had a problem with the name of that place. You know they change it. How, how, how would you go, I'm going to just take a... Sorry for getting on the politics. No. I want to just take one turn in another direction real quickly. When we talked about the garden and we're talking about a whale and now somebody who isn't really up into Islam as much as we are, meaning that they haven't seen all the evidences and things haven't been presented to them as it been to us, so we know with conviction, full conviction that this is from the creator of the heavens and earth. All these things are true. How? about someone who might be an atheist, somebody who might really be maybe agnostic. And he hear, hears this story about a man swallowing a whale, two people in a garden. I think he, the whale swallowed the man. The, wh <laughs> the whale swallowed the man. How would you just, if you want to rationalize a little bit, using some logic, how would you get this person to you know, understand this a little bit? Well, our topic overall is about prophets. Yeah. So the special people that, that we used in the first program, the prophets are those who have this inspiration coming from God to call people to the worship of one God. Yeah. Now, a person may have it inside of themselves naturally, but it doesn't mean they're a prophet. Mm -hmm. But when they're going around calling people to it, then there are some little tests that you can do to see if he is a special prophet person. Yes. Now, first of all is that they would have to have an exceeding character. Their, their way about them would have to really be very moral, very upright, with no bad, you know, bad habits in there. Like yeah. smoking, for instance, that may or may not be a very serious problem for an average person. They might say, oh, it's not that big of a deal. But for a prophet, it would be absolutely no way. Yeah. Because this would be a habit that could be mimicked 
by the followers and mm -hmm. considered to be good. And he couldn't have bad habits that could be mimicked by his followers. That'd be one. Another is that his call would have to be exactly the same call as the call of Adam. Now, Adam, as we mentioned before, too, is having a message of only one God because he's the only person there anyway. So he's having a relationship immediately with one God. Mm -hmm. There isn't any intercessor whatsoever because it's just him and God. Now, the devil tries to get in there and mess him up, but he knows there's only one God. He's worshiping only one God. So whatever he would have uh, told his children would have been about one God. So that's definite. And you'll notice that when you read in any of these actual scriptures, that whenever Adam or Abraham or Moses are mentioned, there is this talk of one God, one God, one God. Now, getting back to Adam, we almost wrapping up with the show. Tell us, did Adam, did he worship Jesus? Did he worship a God who had a son? Did he do any of these things that many people across the globe are doing today? Absolutely not. It would be impossible for Adam to have, as we've said, there weren't any other people. It would be silly. Yeah. It wouldn't even, wouldn't even be a subject to go to because he's the first person. How could he worship someone who's going to come from his own loins? Mm -hmm. How is he going to worship or pray to or ask intercession from one who is not even born yet? Mm. He's praying directly to God. Now, if you want to talk about Jesus, this is a whole subject we could have a program, I think, about it. But let us keep in mind that even what they have today in their English translations of ancient manuscripts that are without really a basis because they're not sure which ones really came from anybody who knew Jesus. I'm talking about the actual physical manuscripts. But even that, when they ask Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And you can read it in English today. It says, to know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. And you have to give him your full love from uh, and all love him or uh, worship him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. Well, this is the same teaching in Islam. It's not different. It's not until other people come along and try to say, well, that means this and it means that. For instance, somebody could say, well, all your mind and all your heart and all your strength right there, those are three things, right? Mm -hmm. So well, that means I'm three too then, doesn't it? Hmm. You know, so this is, it becomes ridiculous to try to associate Adam with something like that. What else can you tell us before we run out of time and close about the first man, Adam? One of the things I think it's important for us to remember is that Adam was human mm -hmm. and he, he was normal. He made a sin and he asked to be forgiven. He asked God to forgive him. God forgave him. And there is no sin being passed on from Adam two generations afterwards. Islam clearly says that's not true, that every child is born innocent, and no matter what the religion of the parents are, if the child dies, they go to paradise. They go to paradise. Mm -hmm. The child is not guilty of what the parents do. It isn't until they're old enough to make their own decisions and make their own choices that God holds them accountable. So this idea that now all of us are cursed because Adam ate the fruit. Well, there's the emphasis more so on the women even than the men. The, according to the Bible anyway, the Old Testament is saying that the women are cursed on their monthly cycles. That's a curse on them. The pain of labor and childbirth is a curse on them. And uh, some of the other things associated with women, it's a curse on them. So much so, at the same time that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was receiving revelation of Quran from the angel Gabriel. That's in the 7th century, in the 600s. That's the same time when the church, the Catholic church, convenes uh, one of their councils to determine whether or not a woman even has a soul. Wow. So Islam is coming exactly the time they're saying something like this, and Islam is saying that uh, not only does a woman have a soul, she has a full status right alongside a man. It's very mm -hmm. beautiful. So let's conclude now with what is the goal of learning about this first man, Adam, and now what can we gain? And what can that person who is seeking from the tr for the truth, what can he take from this? Well, first of all, is to realize that no matter what happens in your life, no matter how bad an experience you might have had, realize there is a God. He is in control. Mm -hmm. And that this is not something you should blame other people for, nor blame yourself. But what you should say is, I made a mistake or mistakes. 
and I want to repent of those mistakes. It's no good to keep wallowing in self-pity. It's no benefit to keep rehashing the same story over and over in your mind. It's time to move on. And the way to move on is to say, this is where I'm going to draw a line, and I'm not going to go backward off of that. There's my line, and I'm moving forward across that line. And that line is to say, up to now I've been making these mistakes, but this is where I stop, move forward, and I really acknowledge I made a lot of bad mistakes. I'm very sorry for whomever I've hurt, and I wish to repent, and I really am sincere about it. I don't want to make those mistakes again. Start with that. It's simple. Ask any psychiatrist. Do the same thing. Yeah, but this way you're channeling just to ask the one who created you to forgive you. Exactly. No human being, not the sun, not the moon. I think if you look into some of the self-help groups and mm -hmm. so on, for instance, Alcoholics Anonymous. Yeah. What's the first thing they do whenever they introduce themselves? Hello, my name is Joe Smith, and I'm an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. They don't stand there and say, Hi, my name is Joe Smith, and, uh, and it's not my fault I drank. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, they made me do it. I was trying to be cool, and I accidentally... And, and, and just oh. say it. Get it over with. But... You're now a recovering alcoholic. Uh -huh. Have you said, hello, my name is Joe Smith and I'm a sinner? Who would argue with you? Yeah. But I don't want to continue in the same mistakes. You still make sins and you still need to repent every day. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to tell us how he repents more than 70 times a day. In another hadith, he said more than 100 times a day. He's repenting himself and he's the best of the best. We'll call him a, a super special Mm -hmm. huh? This is the last and final messenger. Yeah, but uh, that he's not the only super special. Mm -hmm. All the prophets, they turn to God and repent. But all of them, all the prophets, yeah. only turned to one God. They would go back in front of him, and bow down, and ask for his forgiveness. And these are the people that we should emulate. The first and foremost thing is to know which prophet came last. Mm -hmm. So you know who to emulate. And that would be the last and final message sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Well, for us it is. Yes. But it wouldn't have been 2,000 years ago. Yeah. It would have been Jesus. Taking, before we close, that wonderful story, you think now we can benefit by doing what the first man did and repenting, like you said, and calling on the Creator alone and not His creation in all acts of worship. If a person really clears out their heart, clears out their mind, and they say, you know what, I want to repent, and I want to be guided by God, and I'm really, really sincere, I'm going to do my best. If he'll show me any sign, I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah. He'll be surprised at what will happen in his life. That's quite simple. Thank you for being with us again on The Dean Show. And by the way, I have a website. You can Please take share the, with the people. Yeah, yeah. The, let the youth can check this out. Mm -hmm. It's called WatchIslam.com. Yes. WatchIslam.com. You'll find our TV shows there. But on the left side is a drop-down menu. Mm -hmm. Go all the way. It says List All. Then go to the bottom of that page, and you'll find about 16 episodes of the Stories of the Prophets. That's WatchIslam.com? Exactly. And you can see more of the stories of all the prophets from Adam to the last and final messenger the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I'd like to thank you for being with us again here on The Dean Show, where we're here every week trying to help you understand Islam and Muslims. And we'll see you next time, God willing, inshallah. Until then, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you.